हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आवर ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट द इंफॉर्मेशन ट्रांसफर पर्पस सो हियर विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट द पर्पस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन ट्रांसफर इन बायोलॉजिकल सिस्टम सो हियर द इंफॉर्मेशन मीन्स दैट इज द जेनेटिक इंफॉर्मेशन सो वेन वी वर स्टडिंग द बायोमोलिक्यूल्स there we have learned that uh, this dna and rna are the biological in molecules which will carry the genetic information so and we also studied that the genetic information will be transferred from one generation to the another generation or to the offspring with the uh, from the uh, with the help of dna so how this dna will transfer the genetic information from parents to the offspring so that we will be learning in the present lecture so here if you see the central dogma of the um, dna tran uh, information transfer so he, you can see that here is the dna and uh, it will transfer the information genetic information through the transcription process to the rna and this rna will translate the information to the protein so that means this rna will synthesize the specific protein and these proteins will make the offsprings or traits or the next generation kids so this is all about the central dogma of the genetic information transfer but if you see here this how does this genes code for the proteins so how this specific genes on the dna will synthesize the specific protein so here you can see so particular gene will synthesize particular particular genetic information that is present on the dna will synthesize particular proteins and these proteins will make the cells and these cells will combinedly make the babies or the uh, offsprings but how this information will be transferred how this uh, genes or the information on the dna will uh, be will be utilized for the synthesis of proteins so here you can see the picture that uh, so like whenever we make any cookies or any food items what we will do just we will follow the recipe so whatever the recipe says that whatever is written in the recipes to add some ingredients in that uh to make this particular item so like that way we will follow the recipe and we will make the cookies so in the same way these proteins also synthesized by the uh by following the information that is present on the gene so this gene will be acting as a recipe for the preparation of gene protein or for the synthesis of protein so this is all about the genetic information transfer which is uh, that is what we call the gene expression here means the gene is expressing its characteristics in the form of protein so that is why so whatever the physical appearance that we can see in the babies or this offspring so that expression that is nothing but the expression of gene that is present in the embryos so that is what we call it as the gene expression so how this gene expression takes place so that we will see now so during our biomolecules lecture we studied that uh, dna is a genetic material right so and it carries the genetic information from one generation to another generation so these are all the things that we have studied in uh, biomolecules lecture so now we will see actually how this information exists in dna basically how this information whatever we are talking about the genetic information how this genetic information exists in dna in the first place so to understand this Uh, first we need to have a clear idea about the genetic code so what is this genetic code uh, first look at the structure of dna molecule so here we have already studied that the dna molecule is composed of uh, three kind of components like phosphoric acid deoxyribose sugar and along with these two things the nitrogen bases will be there in the dna so there there are four types of nitrogen bases that also we have studied that adenine guanine cytosine and thiamine so these are the four nitrogen bases that are present in dna in case of rna this thiamine will be replaced by the uracil but out of these three components like uh, phosphoric acid deoxyribose sugar and nitrogen base sugar and phosphor phosphate forms the backbone of the dna and they are always same there won't be any difference in the two components in these two components uh, throughout the dna molecule right so these molecules cannot cannot carry the genetic information because they are not varied like uh, if you take any gene sequence so everywhere this uh, ribose sugar and phosphoric acid will be same in fact you take any individual there will be a change in the sequence but there won't be any change in the 
structure or sequence of the phosphoric acid and deoxyribose sugar because they are forming the backbone so they are not varied from one individual to another individual or from one gene to another gene so because of that but we know that the genetic information varies from one person to other person so in that case this phosphoric acid and deoxyribose sugar these two things can never carry the genetic information which is varied because these two things are not varied they, these two are same in every individual and every gene so they cannot carry the genetic information right then who will carry the genetic information so out of these three components only the nitrogen bases vary from one segment to another segment and in fact if you see the uh, nucleosides also every nucleoside will have different different some nucleosides will have adenine nitrogen base and some nucleosides will have thiamine and all these kind of things so because of that reason this genetic information depends on the nitrogen base sequence because if you see the sequence also in the genes so the nit uh, nitrogen bases will not follow the same sequence everywhere so the sequence will change so because of that reason the genetic information depends on the sequence of the nitrogen bases not on the basis of the phosphoric acid or deoxyribose because they are not carrying the genetic inform the genetic information will be carried only by the nitrogen bases so these are four nitrogen bases like uh, adenine guanine cytosine and thiamine so these four nitrogen bases are considered as four alphabets of dna molecule so these four alphabets of dna molecule like uh, all these nitrogen bases this will be used to write the genetic code so that based on the so that based on the genetic codes they will synthesize different different proteins so so george gamma was the first person who has proposed the basic structural unit of the genetic code so the basic problem of this genetic code is to indicate how information written in four letter language of nitrogen basis of dna can be translated into 20 letter language of the amino acids proteins because we have already seen that there are 20 amino acids so these four letter code can means has to synthesize 20 different amino acids if each letter will synthesize one amino acid they can maximum they can synthesize only four different protein uh, amino acids but we know that we need 20 different amino acids so how this four letter code is going to synthesize 20 different amino acids so, so that here is we are talking code. about the genetic code or codon so basically what is that code or codon so this is nothing but a nucleotide that specifies the amino acid so each nucleotide so or the group of nucleotide that specifies the specific amino acid that is what we call the or codon so the simplest possible way or the code is a single code system so if each uh, one nucleotide code for one amino acid but uh, in that way what it can do it can do maximum code for the four amino acid because we have only four types of nucleotides already we have discussed so in that way it cannot uh, code for the 20 amino acids and the second possibility is that just take the two letter code so in that what will happen if you do the permutation combinations uh, with two two letters of these four letters so maximum they can form the 16 codes so that means they can code for 16 amino acids that is also not sufficient because we need 20 amino acids so the, this two two letter code is coding only for the 16 amino acids so then the alternate way is the triple code or that is what we call the triplet code first one is the singlet that was not sufficient to code for 20 amino acids and second one is the doublet code that is also not, not sufficient and the last last one is the triplet code so if you take three letters or three nucleotides together three three nucleotide letters uh, together so in that way it can form the 64 codes by using the permutation and combination methods so these 64 triplets code can easily a code for the 20 amino acid so that is why they considered it as the basic and the best model for the coding of amino acids so here on the right side you can see the genetic code table so you can easily draw this table just by taking the four codons uh, sorry four nucleotides on the left side and four nucleotides on the top and uh, four nucleotides on the right side just i'm explaining you one first table that uh, on the left side it is uracil and on the top it is uracil and on the right side uracil cytosine adenine and guanine so you take one one letter from each side so the first one if you see it is taking you from the left and you from the top and you from the right side so that is why it is forming the u u u and the second one u u c so here it is taking you from the left and you from the right and from the 
sorry u from the left and u from the top and c from the right side so that is why it is forming the u u c so in the same way the third one u u a so it is taking u from the left and from the top and it is taking the a from the right side so here you can see that there are 64 codons each codon will be having three three letters so here we have total 64 codons but we have only 20 amino acids right then what about the other codons what they will be doing so what they will be coding for? so here you can see that uh, beside the few codons it is written as the start so that means uh, uh, here I have not mentioned the start but here you can see on the, the left side the third box it is written the methionine MET so this is nothing but the start codon so whenever the ribosome find these codons they will start the protein synthesis that is why we call them as the start codon and beside the few codons it is written as the stop you can see that is written in the red color on the right side top so that means these are the stop codons so whenever the ribosomes find the codon these codons in a sequence then they will stop the protein synthesis right but still the number does not reach to the 64 because we have only 20 amino acids and uh, some uh, codons will go code for the stop and start of the protein synthesis but what about the so other remaining thing you should remember here that some amino acids are coded by more than one codon so here if you can if you see the example on the top it is written uue uuu and uuc these two codons will code for only uh, only one type of amino acid that is phenylalanine and below that it is code, written uua and uug so these codons will code only for leucine so whenever the ribosomes will find the codon uua or uug so they will synthesize uh, they will synthesize same kind of protein with this uh, they will attach the same kind of amino acid that is leucine so in the same way some of the amino acids are coded by more than one codon so for this reason we call that genetic code is degenerated that means one amino acid is coded by more than one codon so for better understanding you can look at the example that i had given at the bottom of the slide so here is the sequence of uh, mrna so whenever this mrna will pass through the ribosomes so so whenever they find the ribosomes find the code that is aug which is written as the start codon so they will start the protein synthesis so aug codes for the methionine that already i explained the top that in the box so whenever they will find the AUG code so they will start linking the methionine here and then AUC which codes for the isoleucine and uh, UCG which codes for the serine so based on the sequence that is present on the mRNA these ribosomes will start incorporating all these amino acids into the polypeptide chain so in the same way when they will find the codon UAA so that is that codes for the stop codon, stop, uh, stop codon so whenever they will find the stop codon so they will stop the polypeptide synthesis so here you can see UAA, UAA is coded for the stopping of protein synthesis so because that is why we call it a stop codon but one thing just you remember that during the protein synthesis these ribosomes will not synthesize the amino acids just what they will do just they will synthesize the proteins by using the amino acids as the, as the building blocks so they will use the amino acids as a building block and then they will synthesize the proton so just they will be attaching the amino acids to the polypeptide chain based on the genetic code but they will not be synthesizing all these amino acids but they will synthesize the protons uh, proteins by attaching the amino acids and forming the polypeptide so, chain we have seen the concept of genetic code and uh, how how many nucleotides will code for one amino acid so these are all the things that we have already now dis we discussed and now we will see that what is the process of making a protein by using the genetic information that is present on that so DNA. synthesis of proteins by using that genetic information that is present in dna will take place in two steps so first one is first step is called the transcription and second one is the translation by use in these two steps it will tra transfer the genetic information or it will copy the genetic information it will make the proteins by using the genetic code that so is present you can on the see in this uh, central dogma of biology that the genetic information that dna is transferring the information from dna to mrna so it is just com uh, copying the sequence from dna and it is forming the mrna 
so this um, this process is called the transcription so now the genetic code is copied to the mrna and this genetic information will go to the ribosomes and there in translation process what it does this and the uh, ribosomes will synthesize different types of proteins by using the genetic information that has been copied from dna to mrna by using this genetic information they will synthesize different different proteins so this is what we call the translation process here in this picture also you can see in detail transcription and translation process so in the first uh, second or first case what is happening the information is being copied on the rna so here you can see already we know that uh, adenine will bind with the thiamine and uracil uh, one end will bind with the cytosine so these are the things <clears throat> because here you see second place it is adenine but uh, in whatever the information that is being copied that is being copied to the rna but in rna we don't have the thiamine so that is why in place of thiamine this adenine is bind with the binding with the uracil so that also we already discussed so this by copying this information it is making the complementary rna so this rna is forming the transcript so this transcript or this uh, mrna will be utilized for the synthesis of polypeptide or protein in the next translation process so this is all about the information transfer how this dna is copying the information or this rna is copying the information from dna and this mrna is translating the information to form the uh, different types of amino acids so this is all about the story of protein synthesis or gene expression so with this part uh, your uh, information transfer process unit chapter is over